I'm going to describe uh, from step by step, from start to finish, how to pound a tire um, as part of a tire wall. So the first step is is your layout. Um, as you come up in your tire wall, as you come up higher, you want to be an inch and a half back from the previous course of tires. So this tire right here is set an inch and a half back from the fronts of these tires. Uh, the reason for that is so that uh, the um, tire wall will lean back into the berm, um, helping with uh, the stability of the tire wall. Um, so once you have uh, your layout done properly, you also want to be between two other tires. The courses are staggered um, so that when you pound them in, and if you can see this down here, but it'll lock in. You, the bottom of the tire kind of presses out in between the two tires below it, and it locks it into the tire wall. So once you have uh, your layout done, you, um, what we do is, you can't see this here because we've already put cardboard in, but we screw it down. Just take some one inch screws with the thread going all the way up to the head um, so there's no play, and we screw down through the bottom of this tire here into this tire. And we do the same on all four corners where it meets the other tires underneath it. That just helps it stay in place when we pound so we don't have to maneuver it uh, later on once the tire is fully packed. Because once a fuller tire is fully pounded and packed here, it weighs 300 pounds and it's tough to move around. Next thing you do is you cut some sheets of cardboard, um, basically just a little bit bigger than, basically about the width, the, about this wide, the full diameter of the tire. Um, and then you just kind of shove it in there. And you want at least three layers. Um, if it's thin cardboard, maybe four. Um, what the cardboard does is it, um, it keeps the dirt from going out the bottom of the tire while you're pounding it with the sledgehammer. So you're like wailing on that sledgehammer. Um, if you didn't have this here, there's a gap in the front where the, in between the two tires below it where the dirt would just come right out. Uh, eventually this cardboard will rot out, but by the time that ever happens, it'll be long past the point where this whole wall is sealed. I mean, you got it's sealed on this side with dirt and then it's sealed on this side with uh, adobe plaster and maybe concrete and the dirt isn't gonna go anywhere at that point. So this is just a temporary measure. Um, so the first thing you do now to get started is you fill the tire uh, with the first batch of dirt. So you just take any old dirt, whatever you got at the site, and just start filling. I think we can probably take the whole thing. Okay, so now you got put about this much dirt in there and the first thing you do is you push that dirt into the sidewalls by hand. When you're cardboarding the tires, try to avoid this. The cardboard is folded up here. It makes it a little bit difficult to get into the sidewalls. What we really need to do is push that down and get dirt on top of it. Wait till the next batch comes for that. But, uh, in the meantime, these are the tools you need for tire pounding. You need a pickaxe, a level, a sledgehammer, a spade, and a tamper. And you should have them all readily available so you don't have to go searching around for them. It's also good to have dirt right near the tire. For example. Right now, if Max wasn't here helping me out, I would just be taking dirt from right next to the tire, or maybe from right there, and just shoveling it directly into the tire. If you have your dirt far away, or even 10 feet away, you know, it, it's too much to walk back and forth with a shovel. You're gonna need to fill a bucket up and then pull the bucket over. It takes a lot longer and a lot more energy than just shoveling right into the tire. Now we got our second load of dirt here. We're gonna put this into the, just by hand, this into the side walls here. You just pull that side wall up and shove the dirt in. want to go higher than that out there when you're uh, when you're getting ready to fill for pounding or pushing into the sidewall it just starts falling off the sides. When you're really trying to shove as much dirt as you can in those sidewalls uh, before you're pounding, a really good method that a guy named Seabass, a buddy of ours that just came by yesterday showed us, um, is to get the uh, pickaxe underneath that sidewall. 
and just prop it up. And then just use your feet. To push the dirt into the sidewall, to kick it in. This is way more effective than you can do by hand. And as you can see, that really just propped up the sidewall. We do this all the way around. I'm going to need another batch, Max. So you can see, especially over here on this side, we're, we got those sidewalls real nice and firm and high without even pounding with the sledgehammer. So to pound a tire with a sledgehammer, you're going to want to not take a big, big uh, backswing. You want to come about this far, choke up pretty high on it, and just come down to the tire. Now you want to come down a little bit not quite in the center, a little bit off to the side that you're pounding from the center, uh, but a little bit closer to the center, not quite in the middle between the center and the sidewall. And then you want to come down at approximately a 45 degree angle. So when you do it, it looks like this, and you're just pushing that dirt into the sidewall. You're pounding it into the sidewall. So you do that all the way around once at least, maybe more than once. For pounding, it's good to have some rocks in your soil. Now the reason for that, if you have all loose dirt, you're gonna be pounding into the sidewalls, and as you're pounding the other side, after you've done this side, you pound this side, all the vibration, that loose dirt can fall back into the center of the tire. So if you have a rock, or a few rocks, about this size in there, you can pound those rocks in and they'll wedge in the sidewall and hold dirt back and stay wedged when you're pounding the other sides of the tire. This is good to pound with. This rock is getting a little bit on the large side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that out of here. Maybe something, I could actually use that rock, but you don't wanna go any bigger than what I just threw down there. So now when I pound, slamming those rocks in and you can feel the difference too when you're pounding you can feel the resistance and you can feel them just getting wedged in there it's gonna feel these in there too so now you step on our tire we can see these side walls are rock hard almost now it's time to level so as you're building up the tire wall each course of tires needs to be level all the way around uh, one step we do to, as we're pounding to keep them level is to use a four foot level to level to the tire next to you. So in the very beginning you start with like your, your reference tire and you might probably you're going to start in a corner somewhere and when you level out with the four foot level in both directions from that. Then your next course you have a reference tire and you level out in both directions from that. You can always level from a reference tire um, on each course. So we actually have, this is a little bit unique because so we got our cooling tubes breaking up the tire courses. So I'm actually, this tire was leveled to the cooling tube actually, and that tire was leveled to this cooling tube. Same thing over there. And then we, then we, level, then we level out from there. For example, now this becomes our reference because we have a break in our tire wall and we're gonna level across out to the end of the wing wall from this tire. And we do the same on the other side. But this is the only course that's unique for this course. Every other course doesn't have cooling tubes, so you pick one reference tire and it just gets leveled out from that reference tire both directions uh, from that single tire. So the way you level, you take your reference tire and you go front to front first. Put the level on the highest point of the sidewalls. So actually here we can see that this tire is too high. We pound, I actually pounded it too far. Um, the sidewalls have come up too far, so we're going to have to pound that down. And then you go back to back, and actually right here I can see that I'm perfectly level. So my back is good, my front's a little bit too high. So I'm going to first start by tamping down the front a little bit. I'm going to use a sledgehammer like this, and just kick that sidewall down just a bit. 
And when you do that, you remeasure. But anytime you tamp down a sidewall, you need to properly level, you need to push that down because now there's a little bit of play in that sidewall. And I can see with my level here, I'm pretty much perfect. If I don't push down, that sidewall, the rubber is just going to be coming up. And as soon as you put another tire on it, it's going to push that rubber down and you'll have leveled off, um, an, uh, leveled off a, a surface here that's not really real. Because once those tires on top of it push down, it's actually going to be lower. So any, again, anytime you tamp down the side of a tire wall when you level, always push down and get rid of that play on the area that was tamped. So now we're good on front, we're good on back. Next thing we do, we make sure that the tire itself is level. So you can see here that we're almost good. We're talking like a sixteenth of an inch. Um, so what we could do is level these again. And actually I see here this is still a little bit, this is actually a little bit high. And that's what was causing that, just slightly. So now that's good. Now that I tamped that, I gotta press down on both sides. And there we go. Perfectly level that way. And we go this way. We're almost good there. You also have to reference the reference tire on the sides as well to the level. So you come across like this, come across these two points that we know are already level. And you hit this point on this tire and we say this is actually high. This whole tire is high. We already know that see that from the beginning so push down there okay so now I'm good and level there and you come across now you reference this to this push down right here we can see we're definitely high on this side tamp down over here too and now we're good and level so now our newly pounded tire is perfectly level with our reference tire and we are ready to do the final fill and then tamp it down. Like I said before, this is our tamper. Need uh, two shuffle fulls there. So you want to build up a little bit of mount, a little mount at the end. This high, that's perfect. You want to get rid of any substantial rocks they will kick the tamper out in different directions and then you want to tamp this down basically just pound the center of the tire in like this now it's good when you're doing this not to hold on to this handle super tight because that jarring is going to go straight into your arms so it's good to like set it down with force and then kind of let go and let the weight and the force of the tamper just pound it and let it like kind of the jolt kind of just go like this slide in between your hands. Okay, wipe off some excess dirt. Make sure your dirt level is pretty much flush with the tops of the side, uh, the side walls here. And there's uh, another pound of tire.